Uh, I call the meeting on the committee on finance to order for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. And we are still here at the Arnold School in <laughs> uh, from what I understand. Possibly by the end of, by the middle of next month, we will go back to our home base. But that's what I was told. Councilors, welcome. Guests, welcome. Um, don't forget, I still have my training wheels on. So, might be bouncing from side to side because I kind of I'm getting a, I'm getting a hold of this thing, but it hasn't uh, materialized yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing. <laughs> Madam Clerk, if you could read number one, please. Appointment of Tanya Tillman of 10. Oh, I'm not working. 1092 North Main Street, Brockton, to the Elections Commission for a term of four years, invited Tanya Tillman, Cynthia Skravinsky, um, Executive Director, Elections. Welcome, folks. Please, we need to Thank you. Good evening, Councilors. Good evening. Congratulations. Again. Hi. Hi. This is Tanya. She would like to serve on the uh, Election Commission. Uh, she's been a resident for five years. I registered Democrat, and she is willing to serve her community. Anything you want to say to her? To the uh, uh, no, thank you. Thank thank you. Right you. Right second. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. All those of recommending favorably. Anybody opposed? <laughs> so moved. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank, thank you for you. your service. Ooh, Madam Clerk, he's acting up already. Uh, number two, please. <laughs> Appointment of Carol Roberts of 755 Crescent Street, number 516B, Brockton, Mass., to the Brockton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners for a five-year term. Invited Carol Roberts, Thomas Thibault, Assistant Executive Director, Brockton Housing Authority. Uh, welcome, Carol and Thomas, but Thomas is actually the Executive Director of the Housing Authority, not the Assistant uh, Executive Director of the Housing okay. Authority, so I just wanted to correct that for the record. Uh, Carol, would you, uh, have, do you have a statement that you want to? Well, I would like to thank the mayor for um, working and getting me this position. And um, for those who do know me, hello. Um, and I do live at Caffrey Towers. I'm also the president there of the Tenants Association and vice president of the RAB. And I'm here to serve the community and the people of Brockton. Motion. Second. Motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor recommend in favor. Opposed? Thank, Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Item number three, Madam Clerk. Appropriation of additional grant funds in the amount of 175200 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal Year 19, Municipal Police Services Staffing Grant, to City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal Year 19, Municipal Police Services Staffing Grant Fund, invited John Crowley, Chief of Police, Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Welcome, Chief. Good evening. Mike is yours. This is a uh, grant we've got the last few years in a row. It's uh, to supplement our overtime in the state. Total of $175,200. Council's any questions? Council Horton. Thank you. I, I, just, I didn't see here anywhere. Maybe it's my fault that I missed it. Any match required? No. No? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Council Cruz? Actually, that's my question. And it is on the second page, but thank you. Motion to recommend favor. Second. Second. Motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor, recommending favorably. Anybody opposed? Thank you, Chief. Number four, please. Appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of five hundred and forty four thousand five hundred and twenty seven and thirty seven cents from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal Year 19, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr. Community S Safety Initiative Grant, to City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal Year 19, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr. Community Safety Initiative Grant Fund, invited John Crowley, Chief of Police, Karen Preval, Budget Director of Finance. All right, so that, that was item number five, not number four. Go ahead, Chief. Okay, this is the Charles E. Shannon grant we've had it for the last 10 years. Um, this year we were fortunate enough to get maximum funding. 
for the amount of 544,000. That's not the way I have it on the thing. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have the old, uh, the old agenda, so. Apologies in a way, but you know what? I still have the old agenda, so. Gotcha. Right. Go ahead, Chief. Um, again, this is the Charles E. Shannon grant. We've been fortunate enough to get it for the last 10 years. Um, this year, we got an increase in funding up to $544,000. Any questions? Well, this is very important because remember, we had to have some sort of investigation seeing to why we weren't getting all that we requested. And a lot has been done by the team that's part of the Shannon grant. And both the former grant writer and the current grant writer ha had done a great deal of research and worked closely with at the city councilors that were concerned about the funding. And I think it's important to note, too, that um, there's no fiscal match here either. There's no match. And uh, that's, that's really, so that's huge that we got the full amount. And I think congratulations are in order. I attend these Shannon Grant meetings, and they encompass a great deal of individuals doing a whole lot in, to uh, address serious situations in our city. Motion to recommend favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor, recommend in favor. Anybody opposed? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, number five, please. Appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of 125000 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research, SFY 2019, Massachusetts Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant, to City of Brockton Fire Department, SFY 2019, Massachusetts Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant. Invited Michael Williams, Chief of Fire, Karen Preval, Budget Director of Finance. Uh, Chief, good evening, well, Council. This is again, uh, it's basically this given from public safety to police and fire. So, what Chief Crowley just explained to you is the this is the fire side. Um, I believe it went up $50,000 this year from what we got last. Um, and the mayor decided that we should split that $50,000. So, this is 100, this is 25000 more than I received last year, and Chief Crowley received the other $25,000. Motion right 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 right. on the motion. On the motion, uh, Council. Yeah, actually, I had a couple of questions, and I hope you'll give me some leeway. They're really not to do with this in particular. While we have you here, um, can you update us a little bit on the uh, gas leak and where we are and what's going on down there? Absolutely. So on Sunday, midday Sunday, um, a gas valve was hit by a snowplow truck, a Columbia gas snowplow truck. Um, it severed the valve. Um, because of the cold temperatures, there's a, a small range that gas leaks can be repaired. Um, maybe Council of Monaghan would know better than I, but what I was told, um, there's a range of temperature when it's ideal to repair a gas leak. Um, because of the dropping temperatures, um, engineers were called in to monitor not only the temperature and the gas flow, but if they had to shut this gas line down, how long they would have to fix it before customers would start to lose the gas service. Um, it was a risky operation. Even the engineers were a little bit nervous on the window of opportunity to repair this. Um, several plans were talked about. What we decided to do was, instead of trying to re shut down the gas and possibly lose customers, they decided to vent the leak. Uh, they put on a 20-foot vent stack over the leak and sealed it. Um, and what the plan is, is to vent it, which is a safe operation, until the temperatures rise on probably tomorrow or Thursday to repair it. Okay, so, and they think they'll be able to repair it without a loss That's of That's what I was told. Service. So it's been monitored by uh, technicians from Kamami Gas um, <coughs> are on scene. They've been on scene 24 hours a day, as well as a fire watch has been on scene 24 hours a day, monitoring the gas levels in the neighborhood. And then just because people had asked, it was about the safety that you, you were comfortable with how they're, how they're handling it? Yes. Yes. Okay. To get it 20 feet up off the ground, I was comfortable with that, especially with the train so close nearby. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your leeway, Mr. Chairman. Hey, no problem, Councilor. Uh, right. any, other, any other questions? Go ahead, Councilor. Chief, I understand that Columbia Gas is paying for our, our fire watch. They are. Watch. That, that was agreed to right. by Columbia Gas, okay. correct? Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else? Motion. 
Uh, <coughs> All those in favor of recommending this motion in favor, leave to the council. Anybody opposed? We'll, we'll do that. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Chief. You're welcome. Number six, ma'am. Appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of $13,586 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Department of Fire Services, Fiscal Year 2019, Student Awareness of Fire Education, SAFE Grant, $10,386 to City of Brockton Fire Department, Fiscal Year 2019, Student Awareness of Fire Education, SAFE Grant Fund, and 3,200. Two, City of Brockton Fire Department Fiscal Year 2019 Senior Safe Grant Fund invited Michael Williams, Chief of Fire, Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Uh, Chief, welcome again. Thank you. Uh, Council, this is also an annual grant that we receive. Um, the first portion, that 10386, is de dedicated to the education in schools for students, and the additional 33200 usually goes towards our. Uh, High rises and elderly population for fire. fire uh, can, uh, the motion has been properly made and properly seconded. Directly and favorably. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? To the council. Thank you, council. Number seven, Madam Clerk. Appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of $9,253 from Massachusetts Service Alliance MSA to Brockton Public Library. There is a $10,405.92 match required. Invited Paul Engel, Records Access, no, Director, oh, Library, oh, um, and Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Okay. Uh, good, good, good evening, sir. Executive. Uh, do you have a statement for us? Uh, it's a uh, continuation of the MSA grant that we received last year to continue our work in the makerspace developing a mentor program. And you, ha and you haven't been demoted. You no. still <laughs> right. That's okay. Um, motion has been properly made. Second. Second. All those in favor recommending favor? Aye. Thank Opposed? you. Thank you, Paul. Number eight, Madam. Ordered that the following na named sum be and the same is hereby appropriated as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Total appropriation of 165000 from Stabilization Fund, 165000 to Law Department um, slash property purchase for the acquisition of the 34 Cotty Street property. It is intended that this property will be for the benefit of the Council on Aging. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill William Carpenter, Karen Preval, Budget Director Finance, Phil Nasrallah, City Solicitor, Janice Fitzgerald, Director of Council on Aging. Uh, the the uh, mayor is actually in D.C. at uh, the mayor's con uh, U.S. Conference of Mayor, so you couldn't be here. Um, we have actually um, something that we want to do with the council on this particular item, but uh, Ms. Fitzgerald just wanted to say something to the council in terms of a plan that she has that probably has a little to do with this, but we're going to move forward with that. So I just wanted to hear it. Go ahead. I, I have a question on, on, my, on my Mr. Chairman. If, Go ahead, sir. If it's an item and pertaining to the letter that's indicating we want to table, then we're going to table it. Then why do we have to have a discussion? We're not discussing this. She has another something that she just wants to inform us with. It's not, not relative to <coughs> what we're going to do with this item, but she just wanted to uh, inform us if it's related to something. All right, all right. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, Go ahead. for procedural purposes, because the agenda item had been read, the council should make a motion to table it, and then you, yes, sir, and then you as the chair may ask Ms. Fitzgerald to elaborate because it's not directed strictly to the agenda item. But I believe once once it's tabled, we can't discuss it. That's why I was holding but, on. But it's a different, it's a different, it's not germane, right? It's a different concept. Is that my understanding or no? I think it's in the same, within the same item in terms of what they want to do with some parking issues or, or so it's, it's related. Okay. So that's why I feel, right. I feel we can hold off on the tabling after she makes a statement and we can take one. Good evening. Um, so what counselors were saying is correct. We have a site plan that was developed um, probably about a year or so. And this site plan was voted on and unanimously approved by our board of directors. I figured this was a great opportunity while we have you all here to give you this plan 
and also to invite any one of you to come to the Council on Aging and take a walk around and see what it is exactly we're talking about. All we're trying to do is expand the Council on Aging and it seems like we just keep, keep hitting roadblock after roadblock to get this project done. So if we're all on the same page, I think respectfully that we can all get to the end result together. So, um, and if you would just allow me a little bit more of a lean way, um, leeway here so that I could have Richard Bath, the chair of our board, um, explain this site plan briefly. It's just going to be a quick overview of, of what you're looking at. Point of order, Mr. Chairman, yeah. go ahead. And just point of order. And, and, uh, the way I'm seeing it, and I understand what they're trying to say, and that's okay, but in light of it all, we're still tabling the item, and it still works around. I mean, I know they're looking at a different situation in itself, and, and they're going to explain to you, you know, the, the setup of what we have there now as a constant age, aging building, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know you have a little hidden gem there. There's a little hidden foundation that's been underground for some time when the building was built, so, so you can build an addition there. But, but still, you, you're still going and talking about the particular item that's you know, going to be tabled. That's the way I look at it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I mean, I feel more comfortable if it was just totally tabled. Why don't we uh, then do this, because I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And why don't we, uh, I'll file a resolve, and then we can have them come back and basically talk about this new plan. Does, right. does that make it, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Huh? Because your chances, of, your chances of seeing the $165,000 come out of the mayor's office again is nil involved, to be truthful with you. And you know, right, you, so you've talked to him as council president, as I went out the back door, I know what he was saying to me. So, um, you know, all in all, how it went down, he wasn't too happy in how it was presented the last time by everybody. So I, I'd be more comfortable as we just right, drop so it and pick yeah, up. Go ahead, Mr. Council. Go I can just have a moment of personal privilege. Go right ahead, Th This, to my colleagues, th this is a major project. I don't think we've given these people any support staff or any budget for engineering or something else. I, to the best of my knowledge, Mrs. Fitzgerald is not an engineer. To the best of my knowledge, uh, Mr. Bath is a distinguished educator, but he's certainly not a civil engineer or someone. What I think should happen, and I think perhaps you meeting with the mayor should emphasize to him is, if we're going to go forward with this, let's figure out what ancillary staff they may need, what outside consultant they might need to help drive this forward. Because she has plenty to do every day, providing services to <coughs> the senior population. And I just think we're missing something here. We, we, we wouldn't expand a school without having the appropriate person there to help design, implement, evaluate, and do what needs to be done. So, uh, so my moment of personal privilege is to ask you to please convey some thoughts to the mayor that if he puts a reasonable appropriation forward to, to bring on an appropriate person or an appropriate consultant, I, I just think that should be done if we're serious about this. Because we're all over the place with this, from, from good-hearted people but who are not being paid and they're not professional engineers. And this is, this is going to take some time and some effort. Uh, but th thank you. Um, Take a motion to take Second. Second. Uh, motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor of table? All those opposed? Mr. So Chairman, um, um, I have a moment of personal privilege. Um, I would like to say thank you to you because I know that um, how much you've been doing with the little that you have, and given the fact that you know, this is a wonderful project, I'll be the first one to vote in favor. I just want to be this clear. But in the spirit of what my colleague, Council Fowler, said, I think it would be very nice to actually have somebody kind of like understand that design and give us explanation. I'm not saying that you can, but I think by having somebody who knows how this will operates, I think it will be much easier for all of us to understand the blend and where do we go about it. So I know that with the little stuff that you have, I mean, you've been a mix in regard to what you've been doing. So um, although this is table tonight, I believe all of us truly believe in seeing our seniors, you know, being in a place where they can enjoy every moment of it. So I just want to make that point and thank you, you know, publicly for everything that you've been doing in this city. And, and I could not be more proud than having somebody like yourself leading this organization, given the fact that I know the amount of time and energy and resources that it takes to do the job that you do. 
with the little that you have. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you very much, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Ms. Fitzgerald. And uh, like I said, I'll, uh, I'll file a resolve and you guys can come back and um, at least inform us of what you're planning on doing. Okay. All thank right. you very much. Thank you. Uh, agenda item nine, please. Yep. Resolve to invite the city solicitor or a representative from the law department to inform the city council and the public as to the new contract with Comcast or if the new contract has not been signed, information as to where we as a community stand on this issue. Invited, Philip Nasrallah, city solicitor. Thank you, uh, Madam. Uh, I didn't hear anything from the solicitor. Uh, are you here? Good evening, Aileen Barlett, assistant city solicitor here on behalf of the law department. Okay. It would be nice if he at least uh, kind of told us that he couldn't make it, but... I apologize. But we were in communications with Councillor Beauregard. Right. Um, so good evening. Um, as you know, um, the city has finalized its 10-year cable renewal license with Comcast of Brockton, Inc. Um, a copy of the contract was forwarded electronically to all the councillors, along with a cover letter sort of summarizing the main points of the contract. Um, if you'd like, I can certainly summarize those again. Yeah, please do. Okay. Um, so again, the contract is 10 years. It's effective um, October 1st, 2018 through um, September 30th, 2028. Um, as part of the contract, Comcast agreed to continue to make its cable services available to all Brockton residents. Um, a main provision of the contract is that Comcast will provide 5% of its gross annual revenues, less applicable statutory fees. Um, this is an increase from the prior renewal, which was 4% um, plus applicable fees. This is the statutory maximum we can, uh, we can get under the contract. Um, something that's new in this renewal license that cable, um, Comcast agreed to provide cable related um, peg access capital funding. There was zero dollars before um, provided in the last renewal license. Um, this is the amount of $1.25 million um, and it will be payable at $125,000 per year. And this is for things that um, cable access can use to upgrade their actual um, equipment and um, the hardwired stuff, um, get more advanced equipment. Um, another exciting item, I think, um, is that currently under the last renewal license, the city has three standard definition channels. Um, finally, for the second time in Comcast history, they agreed to provide one HD channel. Um, they agreed to provide it to the uh, city of Brockton. Um, another piece of that is while Massasoit always had their own SG channel, Comcast never um, wanted to memorialize that as part of their license, so they agreed to do that as well, put the four SD channels. Um, and as the um, letter indicated, we're also upgrading the SD channels, so there's gonna be, um, they're gonna be in digital format now, which will provide a better picture. So one HD channel, better um, quality SD channels. Um, another piece is by letter that Comcast agreed to provide a senior citizen discount. Finally, they it wasn't um, in the last renewal license. This is equal to 10% off their li limited basic um, service, which is about approximately 10 to $12 a month, or $2 um, off of their digital starter plan. Um, please, yeah, as you, there was no um, senior citizen discount provided in the last contract. Um, another piece is that Comcast has agreed to pay the city $150,000 in consideration for um, decommissioning um, what's referred to as the institutional network, the INET. Um, it's an outdated, uh, loop of connecting city buildings. Um, so what's going to happen is that that's going to be upgraded to fiber. So again, the quality will be that much better going from building to building. Um, again, Comcast will continue to make their cable service provided to all uh, city residents and um, they will continue to operate their customer service office. Um, as you know, they had a recent grand opening in Westgate Mall this past year um, and they will continue to operate that throughout the entire 10 year term of their license. Councillor Borger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I had filed this resolve way back, and the idea was to let everyone know I, it's a long contract, it's pretty thick, and it is available to the individuals that wish to read or find out on it. And I had spoken earlier today with the solicitor. We had a long talk. I had sent out 11 questions and she was able to consolidate this for everyone to get an idea because a lot of us were concerned about the cost of upgrading and making sure that the, how do we want to phrase this, that people's uh, 
I want to say service bills would not go up because money was spent here in the city to upgrade. This was part of the contract. This is not anything that people had, have to pay extra for. That a variety of different information was available on that. And also, I had wanted to highlight here that there were various pages throughout this contract from 31 to 41 and then 69 to 74 that explain the rights of subscribers because I found out today there's over 25,000 subscribers here in Brockton for Comcast. And so that's a you know, decent chunk of individuals. And sometimes there are certain concerns about their bills and their rights with their bills, any kind of questions. And other, other, we had some other discussions about if people are using cable illegally <laughs> and uh, how the jurisdiction fo falls under the police and the district attorney and uh, for people to understand that aspect and uh, that, you know, that the city itself as a, was not, you know, even though they had the contract, was not the governing. It was through a criminal situation. And also we discussed censorship briefly and uh, that at, at this time, there is no authority the city has to censor anything. And we just wanted to mention that because there are different concerns that arise. And last but not least, we discussed what happens if, one, if Comcast gets bought out. <laughs> and we found out that if, in fact, tomorrow it was bought out or what have you, that they would have to adhere, the new company would have to adhere to the Comcast contract. And that was important. And this was also a huge part of it. And the reason it took so long is because this is a 10-year contract. And never before has something like this been done. So anyway, I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to go over this. But I just, it, this is a big deal for many people that Comcast contracts. And um, we know that it's, it is a luxury, but it is a necessity and for so many. And that, that, was, that was our primary concern. So I really want to thank the solicitor's office because I had spoken to them on several occasions over this. So thank you. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Attorney Bartlett. A uh, quick question. You mentioned the senior discount, mm -hmm. which we have been uh, asking for and advocating for for many years now. So I'm happy to hear that something will be offered to our seniors. But how are we going to announce it to them? How will they find out, you know? So included in the packet um, that it was forwarded electronically, there was um, the letter from Comcast um, sort of outlining the senior discount and the requirements. Um, I know the mayor was really excited about the senior discount. It was a really important topic for him. So certainly we intend on making it known. Uh, but this is important to you know get the word out, especially with the basic service, because I don't think people realize that there's a 10 to $12 service out there. And if you're certainly pinching pennies and a senior discount is important to you, they're not going for the $70 starter plan. That's true. I mean, I know I had been asked many, since I first got on to the city council from many of our seniors that are in high rises, they wanted a special rates. So mm -hmm. uh, I know we were asking for it right here in this room when we had the hearing um, for, the, for the renewal of the new contract. So I just want to make sure that people at home hear about, obviously the ones that are watching us have cable, but um, for people that don't, that may have an interest to have the local channel, that they will get discounts. So it'll be interesting to get the information out to them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dakesh. Thank you for your work on this contract. No problem. You mentioned we're going to be paid $100,000 by Comcast for decommissioning an old system. $150,000. 150. And that check's already been received and is in the Comcast revolving fund. Okay. Just briefly explain to us about the loop being upgraded to fiber. So um, currently the INET, as par part of the last renewal, and I'm not sure exactly when it was um, installed, I believe it was the last renewal, um, it's a part of my uh, analog, um, I don't know, if the, the system, it's not fiber. And fiber is what we currently use, and that's what gives you that nice clean, crisp um, um, connection and um, picture. So. Um, the Comcast currently owns and operates that as a service to the city of Brockton. Um, it just made more sense for the Comcast was interested in decommissioning it so they don't have to maintain it. Um, and we're interested in upgrading it to a better network. So the $150,000 is in consideration. That's not passed through to subscribers. That was Comcast paying us that money um, in order to you know, per, um, upgrade that to a fiber network. And does this include the system that's at Brockton High School? 
It sh yes, um, on the INET is Brockton High. Okay. It's one of the buildings. There's in the contract um, the contract exhibit, I believe, two and three okay. are all the buildings that are currently connected. Um, there are many, yeah. And does this also include the city council chambers that one day we will return to? Mm -hmm. Yes, a nice, crisp, beautiful picture <laughs> with the new uh, fiber network is intended. That's great. Yes, That's great. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Councillor. I move to recommend this. I just wanted to say something uh, in, in, well, actually, let me, let me ask for a vote on this. All those in favor of recommending favorably? All those opposed? Thank you, Amy. I just wanted to, uh, if you could just please um, share a message with the solicitor <laughs> that, you know, we make an effort to be here on a, on a, on a weekly basis. Um, love to see you here. Would have loved to see you on the agenda itself. We don't have to see him, but if he's on the agenda, it would make sense that he either contact us uh, through the clerk to let us know that he's not available to come so that we don't sit here looking around, because I was actually asking Council Fowell if we needed to postpone this item because I didn't know that he was uh, not coming. Uh, in, the air, in the age of technology, I don't think it's that hard for him to, uh, to notify this body when he cannot be here. I mean, I know that we tried that several times in the past, but you know what, that's not, that's not something that I'm going to put up with. And I just, uh, I please share that with him, that the next time that he's invited and that he can't come, to at least let us know ahead of time who's coming for him. Uh, and if you can't make it, then we'll definitely, you know, swap them around and uh, have you come in this place because I, I was, the, what you provided us was very important. Thank you. Thank you. I have to get that off my chest. <clears throat> uh, I think we're done with the agenda, right? We are. Okay. Yes. Uh, May I have a moment of personal privilege? Please do. Thank you. I just wanted to invite, again, all of the counselors and everyone at home and in the audience this evening to attend um, the first Ward 4 meeting of 2019. It will be held next Wednesday, January 30th, from 6.30 until 8 o'clock at the Davis School on Plain Street. Everyone is welcome to attend. You don't have to be from Ward 4. But I'm really hoping my Ward 4 residents and the constituents I've helped in the last year will come out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let Councilor Lally was first and then you. Go ahead, sir. I just wanted to uh, announce that there's a Ward 6 meeting uh, Thursday, January 31st at 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, at the Ashfield Middle School. Uh, you know, just as with uh, the Ward 4 meeting, everyone is welcome, but uh, it is about uh, an issue in the wards. Someone, a uh, developer, has come forward. They're looking to build a grow operation in the village. Uh, but they want to hear from the residents first. So that will be, you know, the residents' chance to uh, provide feedback to the developer. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Council Borger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, first of all, we want to remind um, the seniors that um, we did have snow this week, and uh, there are um, programs for seniors that uh, you can contact Andrea Burton at 508 897-6813. They can provide snow shoveling services if you qualify. Again, that's 508-897-6813 because we want you to be safe out there. By the way, a qualified senior is 60 years of age or older. Uh, also, people have, still have time to do abatements and extensions and other um, discounts and their concerns with uh, tax payments and uh, that's still uh, not due till February 1st. And uh, also, I am having a ward meeting, Ward 5, Tuesday, January 29th at the Downey School, uh, beginning at 6.30, and everyone is welcome. The primary concern subject will be the intersections of uh, Pine and Thatcher and Thatcher, Massasoit, and uh, pine and summer and the proposals and plans with the input from those that live in that area and anyone else that, how would I say, it, drives through that area uh, because of the traffic situations there. So thank you very much. There will be other things too, but that is the primary focus and a brief presentation on that. So thank you. Uh, anyone else? Go ahead, sir. Go for it, sir. Right. Because of the proliferation of all of these ward meetings, uh, the Accounts Committee will not have an opportunity to meet in January. We will meet in February, and I will ask the auditor to send out 
to the members of the Accounts Committee the uh, warrants that have been processed in January. We'll look through those and then we will get on to a regular schedule. But I just do not believe it's going to be possible to jam something into January. So okay. uh, if, if I could impose upon you to send That's that fine. out and we'll pick a date for February, we'll, we'll get on track. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, anything else? <laughs> uh, well, I just wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hit. I didn't hit the uh, gal. Uh, I just wanted to remind uh, residents that uh, as snow is falling, for uh, people to clear their sidewalks, uh, and also uh, we've got. Uh, we had the icing situation this weekend in the city, and um, we got tons of kids that walk all over this city to school. Uh, throw some uh, some salt on those sidewalks as well to make it a little easier for our, especially the youngsters, to walk on uh, on the sidewalks and the streets in the city. Uh, and if we don't have any other business, I will adjourn the meeting. <laughs>